Hello Virtual Dreamers, Marcus Dahl here. What will define the next generation of virtual reality? This is a question that's popped into the VR community quite often over the past few years. So this video will be going over some of the points surrounding the matter to try and determine an answer to the often asked question. Before we can tackle the question of next generations though, it's worth understanding what the current generation of virtual reality looks like and its origins. Around 2016, the Oculus Rift and HTC Vive both launched and brought six degree of freedom virtual reality technology to the masses. To many, this is when virtual reality first became available to them and is the proper consumer birth of VR. Since then, both headsets have gotten multiple iterations, successors, and new competitors have entered the space. Even a whole new style of virtual reality has entered the mix, as the Quest 1 ushered in the larger adoption of standalone VR as a concept. Throw in the multitude of peripherals that have released to elevate the VR experience far past the debut, whether by adding full body tracking or haptics to the experience, and the evolution of the VR controller with the knuckles design of the Valve Index, and you'll find that we're a far shot away from the debut Oculus Rift CV1 and HTC Vive now in terms of technology. When you consider too that we outright have headsets that divide themselves from their predecessors numerically, like the HP Reverb G2 or the Oculus Quest 2, and I wouldn't blame people for saying that we're already in the second generation of VR, if not waiting on the third. There's certainly a lot to be glad about regardless, but having been in the VR scene as long as I have, I also know that none of the things mentioned so far are necessarily what a lot of people had in mind when the idea of next generation VR was brought up in the past. Dynamic foveated rendering with eye tracking, wireless PC VR headsets, higher fields of views, 4K resolutions, varifocal displays, these were the features that marked the next generation of VR to a lot of people. And while pieces of these are certainly available in headsets today, and with some peripherals here and there, it's a far cry from being widely distributed, and many people would argue that we aren't in the next gen till all of them are readily available. While I've personally noticed the jump between the Oculus Quest 1 and the Oculus Quest 2, I'd be hard pressed to say that the upgrade from the Quest 1 would have happened if it didn't end up coming so cheap after I sold my old headset to recoup the cost. Clearly, there are plenty of things to see improved in the VR landscape today, but the more I look at the landscape today compared to when it started, I increasingly find myself asking whether or not the concept of generations is even suitable for VR at this point. Unlike consoles, VR isn't attached to set hardware for the most part, and can evolve essentially as soon as new tech is available, as is the standard for the PC space. In a way, the very concept of generations is a bit unnecessary in the modern age of software, as most of the games and applications that we use today exist as live services that are constantly being updated to take advantage of whatever is available. It's the reason why Minecraft can be both a joke to run and a crisis level threat at the same time. Until we reach a point where a singular hardware upgrade can transform the very experience of playing on a level that can't be replicated by old hardware or through peripheral use, I just don't think we'll see much use for the concept of hardware generations in VR as anything other than a tool for historians. Thank you very much for watching this video, everyone. Special thanks to my patrons on Patreon who support the creation of these videos and to everyone who subscribes to let YouTube algorithm Sama know to make our paths cross again. Till next time, my fellow adventurers and dreamers, this has been Marcus Dahl, logging out.